Well, I thought our, our young ladies really battled in that contest. You know, certainly thought we came out and played really well on both ends of the court early. And then certainly the second quarter, maybe not quite as, as well. Uh, we didn't defend very well. I think they scored at a 54% clip in the second quarter. Third quarter, we couldn't find ways to, even when we got good shots we didn't make good shots but we had a hard time getting the ball moving and continue to make adjustments and I thought in the fourth quarter really defended at a high level and our movement changed and that gave us some good looks and our, to our kids credit they found a way it's really challenging the the week that we've had being on the road three games in a week and then the long travel and getting back and and so to our young ladies credit they they found a way and that was really uh, uh, there's a lot of guts and toughness in doing that. Let's start with Maddie. You know, obviously, an emotional uh, pregame with the, her second senior night. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but this one obviously is much more real. Yeah. She comes out and has 20 points. What does that mean to you as a coach in your first year with the program to have a player yeah. like that? Well, right. I think Madison Smith has had a, just a certainly a great career, but certainly a great super senior year, if you will. And so, you know, just I thought in a game when we really needed to make things happen, she did. And there were stretches where it may not have even been a, an easy shot and she drilled some really big shots for us. But also, you know, as a as a person who in timeouts is is kind of urging and begging and just as a, as a leader in that regard in terms of trying to create some energy, and I thought really defended at a high level too. So that was a lot of fun. Sticking with Maddie for a second, yeah. um, Kansas State's coach was saying he should have sent her a postcard because she's now finally moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some other coaches kind of say similar things that you know they're tired of seeing her to a degree. Um, the respect level that she has around this conference, what does that say about her level of play and what she's meant to this program? Well, I think she's someone who is always battling. She plays. She plays so hard, and you know she finds a way to make a lot of things happen. And you know, it, it is someone who has been relied on throughout the entire course of her career, and you know continues to do that. So, just a, it certainly is a tribute to her. What does that mean to you as a coach? You know, you're starting your first program to have a player like that that's had such a, a, a long time in the program. Well, she's someone who obviously, you know, West Virginia and West Virginia women's basketball means a great deal to her. And so to have someone in your program that, that is is leading from that that mindset is, is is certainly I believe really grateful for West Virginia and and so it just it speaks volumes you know you can see and our fans certainly appreciate her and she had her moment when she came out at the end and kind of appreciating her fans and so that was really special. Jay was three when the game started at 45. It seemed like everybody took a deep breath right. and kind of relaxed after that. How big was that? Yeah, it was a big three for us because we hadn't scored in a while and hadn't scored consistently. And, and even, had, you know, I thought early in the game we really got some really good looks. And then their adjustments defensively and, and how they were covering some actions in the zone made it tough for us to get those same looks that we got early in the game. And so, again, I thought our, our young ladies made some adjustments in how our movement, you know, our movement opened things up. And then for her to get a really good look and to knock it in was really big for us. Third, oh, uh, third quarter, K-State goes on a 15-point run and gets themselves right back in the game. What was going on in the defense that allowed them to get in? Well, we couldn't get the ball or in the lane consistently enough. We couldn't get the ball at the free throw line area consistently enough. And when we did get it there, and we had some stretches where we did get it there, then we didn't make some of those shots. And so tried a couple different things from a movement standpoint. Um, Tried calling a couple timeouts. Tried a couple different, different uh, ways to attack, and then finally things settled in in the fourth quarter of 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 how to attack it a little bit differently. And so uh, I think certainly a lot of credit to Kansas State during that quarter, and but also to our young ladies for you know continuing to battle and not not give in. So that was really good to see. Well, Gregory got three for ten from the floor. How big was the defensive effort on her? Yeah, she's so hard to guard because she can shoot it from the arc. Uh, I think she does such a good job of posting up and, and making things happen from the kind of not just on the block, but almost like that. It's not even a mid post area. It's kind of like just off the block, almost to the short corner area. And uh, I thought our young ladies did a really good job of once we the first time we saw it, we weren't 
used to that, you know, and, and I think tonight did a better job of trying to limit some opportunities and try to help a little bit quicker in some scenarios. And if you don't help, if you don't, and you saw that in the fourth quarter, you know, you don't help in certain scenarios, they get to the rim pretty quickly. And so I thought our awareness for the most part throughout the whole game was really good. Defensively in the first half, uh, I think you all caused 14 turnovers before halftime. I guess what were you guys doing well in the first half against K-State's offense? Again, I think our, our awareness of trying to limit opportunities at the rim, you know, it, it, and they're deceptive because they really shoot it well and they space the floor, you know, but what they're really good at is attacking the rim. And then when you help, when you don't help, they score it efficiently. If you do help, you know, then they kick it. And so I, I just thought our awareness to try to limit opportunities in the paint was pretty good for the most part. And when we miss something, they always seem to make us pay. But I think it wasn't, and it's not just the one kid coming over to help, but it's the next kid sinking down or the next kid ready to get out to the shooter and, and the kind of that scramble mode, that awareness was good for us. Last home game, you were missing a lot of key players and now you're back. Is it a breath of, or a sigh of relief, I should say, now that you know, you're inching closer to the Big 12 tournament? Now yeah, it's important. You know, it's important that, and I think different players have stepped up during different games and different parts of games, and I think we saw different stretches of that. And so, yeah, it's really important that we have two games left now before the Big 12 tournament. So it's important that we continue to build. It's important that we continue to grow. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you.